Hello, this is Plumber Tom, and welcome to this video where I'm going to give you some basic information about water softeners. First of all, the purpose of a water softener is to remove hard minerals from your water and exchange those for a softer mineral like salt. Now, don't worry, it's not going to be salty like the ocean splashing you in the face. It's very subtle, but salt as a mineral is much easier on faucets, fixtures, appliances, water heaters, and even your skin. So the removal of hard water mineral like calcium and magnesium is very much to your advantage and can save you money over time. Some of the advantages specifically that soft water provides are you're going to have less hard water buildup. That white scale that piles up on your faucets, it sticks to your dishes, it sticks to your shower walls, and it sticks to your skin. All that goes away. Let's talk for a minute about the different parts of a water softener. Softeners come as a system. First of all, there's a softener tank. This contains resin that does the exchange. There's a brine tank. That's the salt tank. It holds all that salt between regenerations. There's a valve head, provides all of the function for the water softener when it's flowing and feeding you soft water or when it's regenerating and needs to process all that water. There's also a bypass valve on the back side of any softener. This allows you to shut off the softener while maintaining water to the rest of the building if the softener has any problems, leaks, or needs service. Let's examine the regeneration process. First of all, the softener tank has resin inside of it which holds onto minerals. The resin will be holding onto salt minerals until the water passes through with hard water mineral like calcium. The resin will then exchange the salt mineral for the calcium and hold on to the calcium, allowing you to enjoy soft water. However, eventually the resin will be full, fully saturated with that hard water mineral and it will need to be flushed out. This happens during the regeneration process. As it regenerates, it flushes out the hard water mineral while bringing in high concentration of salt, which reloads all of the resin with salt mineral they can then be exchanged again. By this process, your softener can continue to soften your water with the same resin over and over and over as we bring in the salt and remove the hard water minerals. Now this is an automatic process for the most part. Softeners monitor the amount of water that you're using and they will automatically regenerate as they need to. There is also a manual option on most softeners. You can push or hold down the regen button and that will start a manual regeneration process. I'll usually do that if I've been out of town for a couple weeks and the water's been sitting in that resin. I like to just give it a flush, but for the most part, you really don't need to worry about that. Manufacturers usually set the water softener regeneration time for two o'clock in the morning or something like that. That's generally so that it's not regenerating while you're using water during the day. It's not a problem if you use water at the same time that it is regenerating. When it regenerates, you're going to hear the sound of water flushing down the drain. You'll hear the valve turning. If that disturbs your sleep in the middle of the night, you can change the time of that regeneration to whatever time is convenient for you. Just know that it generally takes a couple of hours. And if you want to change that, look in the owner's manual. It will show you how to change that regeneration time. The automatic regeneration happens as you've used water. So this isn't going to happen every day. Usually it's about once a week, once every other week. Generally, it doesn't happen that often. Now, at the same time, if you have a lot of people at your house or you have visitors and you use more water, the softener tracks the amount of water that you're using and it will regenerate as needed. Some models of water softeners have the softener tank inside of the brine tank. This conserves on space. Uh, these are generally a little smaller. With any water softener, you're generally going to get what you pay for. So if you buy a really cheap one, it's going to do the job. It just might not last as long. If you're looking for more information about the programming, time settings, and hardness settings of the water softener, I recommend that you look into the manufacturer's owner or installation manual. Now, some things that you need to know. When you first turn on a water softener, there is a chance that it's going to give you a little bit of coloration in the water. It might be a little bit yellow. That's normal. It's not harmful to you it'll eventually flush out. Same thing can happen if the water sits in that resin for a long time. It's important to understand that soft water is entirely potable. You can drink it, it's not gonna be a problem. Some people don't like the taste of it. And unless you have problems with high sodium and are trying to keep all salt out of your diet, uh, it's fine to drink. The best way to waste a water softener is to fail to put salt into the brine tank. 
The softener is going to continue to process water and think that it's doing its job, but if you don't put the salt in, it can't provide soft water for you. When you are adding salt to a water softener, you should keep the brine tank about two-thirds full. You don't want to overload it because sometimes that causes a salt bridge where it doesn't dissolve all the way in. As long as your water softener continues to dissolve salt and use it, then it's doing its job. It'll dissolve that at a different rate, and it's going to depend on use. Generally, people will go through about a 40-pound bag per month, but that can be more or less depending on your usage. Now, you can use basically any kind of softener salt in your brine tank. I recommend that you use the pellets. They tend to dissolve better. Pellet salt can be purchased at most grocery stores, hardware stores, or places like that. If your brine tank becomes really nasty, dirty looking, then it's good to let that salt run out. You can take out that brine tank, wash it. If you have the two-in-one softener, that becomes really difficult and you'd almost do better to just throw the whole thing away and start over. Now, it's important to understand how the bypass valve works. There are several different types of bypass valves. Some operate using a set of quarter turn valves. By turning the handles quarter turn towards each other, you can stop water flowing through the softener and maintain water through the house. There's another bypass assembly common on the back of water softeners, which just has a push rod. By pushing it in, you can bypass the softener. By pulling it out, you allow water through the softener. Some people don't like the slippery feeling of water softener. It does tend to feel a little more slippery. But what you need to understand is what you're feeling is the difference between a hard water mineral on your skin and a soft water mineral like salt. And when you have that soft water mineral, you're able to get a lather much easier with soaps or shampoos. Generally, you can use less detergents on laundry. Overall, you should understand that that slippery feeling is normal. And once you get used to it, you find it's much better for your skin. That does it for this explanation video on water softeners. I hope you enjoy the benefits and the positive effects from your softener. Don't forget to put salt in and it will take good care of you and your fixtures and appliances.